In phase three, we finally prepared the master analytic workspace for our analysis. Some fields in the original data could not be used as variables initially because how they were collected. We needed to change that and the tactics we used are outlined in phases 3a and 3b. Some colleagues mentioned more than one institutional program area in one of the fields. Because of this, we couldn't just use that field as a variable. Instead, we needed to autocode the data and transform the code into a variable. You can see this here. We created a code for each program area and we auto-coded each document for this specific program area. You see here in the document browser, we got the Community Natural Resource Economic Development and that is also coded with the code Community Natural Resources and Economic Development. We then transformed this code into a variable, so it became a variable just as the other variables in MaxQDA. So you can see here, Community uh, Natural Resources and Economic Development became a variable 0, 1. 1 means there was a hit, 0 means there wasn't a hit. We're basically using these functions to make the fact that a record is coded a certain way into a property of that record. This workflow can be used in many different situations and it's described in more detail in the book. You'll see this workflow again, for example, in phase 4b and in phase 5b. Another thing I want to highlight is the way we organized the code tree. As you remember, our strategic goal was to create an inviting workspace. In phases 3.5 to 3f, we utilized a series of software functions to tidy up the workspace a little bit. First, we tucked all the codes that MaxQDA automatically had created into a higher level code and changed its color. You can see this here, we called it organizational codes and you see we changed the color to this uh, greenish um, hue. And we tucked all the other codes that were created by the software under this one. That way the codes can be tucked away in the code system and they can be hidden in the document browser. For example, by just clicking like this, I'm collapsing them all. Another nice thing about assigning the color here is that I can also hide those codes here in my document browser. And now I have a clean slate again. The codes are not gone, they're just not visualized. This tactic compensates for the fact that in MaxQDA we can only have one coding tree rather than being able to create multiple disconnected coding trees. The names of our organizational codes are abbreviated versions of the questions that each result's narrative answers. MaxQDA has a limit on how many characters a code can have. Also, longer code names clutter up your document browser and your code system. That's why we added the full questions and memos that we stuck to the codes. You can see this here. This way, the code names act as reminders, while the memos give us quick access to the exact wording of the questions.